Welcome back to another video from Blue Ridge Overland Gear. And I hope you're ready for this because this one, well, it's intense. This is our second video in the Tents for Overlanding series. In the first one, we hit rooftop tents. If you're into overlanding or you're even just kind of checking it out, you probably know what that is. But in this episode, we're gonna take a look at ground tents. With ground tents, self-explanatory, but obviously these are tents that are on the ground, not on your rooftop. Just like with anything else, there's a wide variety that's available. You can start as simple as like a backpacking tent. You can go up to those larger traditional car camping tents. You know, three to four person, they're a little bit bigger. Some big tent brands have been making overland specific tents in the last couple of years. But the problem that I see with those is they are humongous. We're talking like dedicating its own duffel bag size, you know, area to just your tent. It sounds cool in theory, but it probably is gonna take a small army to put them together. And it doesn't really have the benefits of kind of the quick deploy overland specific tents that we're gonna hit on in a moment. I'm actually a big fan of these because if you're on a trip and you wanna set up camp, you can put your shelter up and then you decide, oh, we wanna run somewhere to do something else. You know, check out this swimming hole or whatever, you know, get to this hiking trailhead. Well, if you got a rooftop tent, you gotta shut it before you drive. At least I'm pretty sure that's suggested by all the manufacturers, right? Whereas if you've got a ground tent, you can just drive off, then you get back at the end of the day and all you gotta do is cook dinner and have a nice night around the fire. You don't have to put your tent and your shelter back up and all that. Plus, if you're not a huge fan of maybe the mattress that comes in a rooftop tent, with these bigger quick deploy tents, you can throw a cot in there, you can throw in some really nice inflatable mattresses. You've got a lot of options. And if you get socked in in really bad weather, almost all of these are gonna have room to kind of stand up, stretch, change clothes, without being in that compact space and doing the shuffle of yoga of changing out like long underwear and a small tent. Just because the construction's a little bit different, we're gonna start with Oz Tent. These have been around and really popular with Australian crowd for a long time and plenty of overlanders in the States and other places have them. Like a lot of these bigger tents, they're in a long package when they're packed up and uh, once you deploy them out, their shape is a little bit different from some of the other brands we're gonna talk about. And I mean this with love in my heart, it's kind of a shanty look. One thing that's awesome about Austin is there is a lot of modular accessories and like things you can do. It's kind of build your own shelter. You can hook them to awnings. There's ways to like connect them together. And it's honestly kind of a cool system that if your friends are already invested in this, you can get stuff. And if you got a trip with just really terrible weather, you can almost have like this little enclosed area. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about kind of a family of tents because the construction method is the same from a few different brands. You got Gazelle. You've got Free Spirit and Shift Pod that are kind of at the forefront of this genre. And so they all have this X hub construction that more or less you pop out these center X's around the walls and the ceiling and that puts tension on the poles. These things are incredibly quick to deploy and break down. Uh, for example, when I got my Gazelle T4, the first time I used it is in the situation where you shouldn't test a tent. We got into camp late and rain was on its way was still inside that tent and in the dry inside of just a couple of minutes. Great for having maybe two cots and even a cooler or something like that. And if you get stuck in bad weather, you can hang out in there and not feel super claustrophobic. All right, so as you can see, the hub tent definitely has some advantages. It sets up really quick and breaks down just as quickly. However, it's pretty big compared to this nice car camping Coleman tent right here. It's easy to pack, it'll fit anywhere. This will fit about anywhere a person will. You may not even be able to get this in some short bed trucks in a nice, neat fashion. It has to go on top or uh, on a roof rack of some SUVs if you've got four passengers. So there's pros and cons to both. One thing we wanna stress is don't let only having this kind of tent keep you from getting out. One thing to look out for though, personal experience with these hub tents, if you're in high winds, make sure you guy out those center points because remember, they're meant to be collapsible. So if you get enough inward pressure on a wall, it can pop that wall in and then it kind of, uh, you know, causes your tent not to necessarily be structurally sound. However, that's a small price to pay for how fast they are, how much room you've got on the inside, and they're made with really durable materials so you don't have to worry about, you know, like every little poking rock and gravel and things like that while you're out in the woods. Okay, so one last ground tent we wanna hit on is the swag. We won't blame you if you don't know what this is. They're really more popular in Australia, but a lot of great overland tent brands make them like 23-0, ARB, just to name a couple. Essentially, this is a low-slung ground tent, and the idea being that you can just roll it all up and your mattress and even your bedding stays inside. They're usually some type of wax canvas or a similar material. 
Your swag is going to come with a mattress included, and it's meant to be rolled up and stored with the exterior of the tent. Matter of fact, you can even throw your sleeping bag in there and do the same. They don't have a lot of room though, because they're kind of like coffin shaped, you know, length of a body, give you a maybe 20 inches of height inside. So changing clothes or, you know, if you're stuck in there on a, a rainy day, isn't great. They also tend to take up a lot of room for the living space that they provide. Uh, some of the really nice ones have really great mattresses, but with that comes more bulk. Not exaggerating when I say that this may even be like half of a truck bed uh, to kind of give you an idea of the kind of space you have to dedicate to a swag. However, they're super durable. They usually keep light and water out really well. And if you're okay with a lack of stand and space, it may be a good option for you. And let's not forget the humble backpacking hammock. Don't discount that as a great way to get a good night's rest on your overland adventure. It's super compact. There's a lot of great brands making really cool gear in terms of like quilts and hammocks and tarps and bug nets and everything else. Plus this setup is about as comfy as it gets. I don't think that just cause you're sleeping in a ground tent, it's like a lower class of overlanding. They've got a lot of great pros to those. Just get what's right for you and how you travel. Thanks for watching this entry in our Tents for Overlanding series and we will catch you soon.